Alright, we can open to 1 Timothy, the very end of the book. First Timothy in chapter number six. Let's look at the last two verses of Paul's letter to Timothy here. He has been giving several admonishments before he closes his letter out. And verse 20, he directs specifically to Timothy. And he says, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. Amen. Here, Paul addresses uh, people who would have you to really doubt the Word of God and doubt your faith and who would try to cause you to err from the faith as he points out in verse 21. First he says, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. That which was committed to his trust was, I believe, referring back to the gospel. If you go back to chapter 1, verse 11, Paul says, According to the glorious gospel of blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Mm -hmm. So here he is saying that this same gospel has been committed to the, Timothy's trust that he is to keep it, as to guard it, to watch it. And we are to, to guard the gospel, if you will, to guard the truth. So there are people today who want to corrupt you from the true gospel. There's people today who want to just outright do away with it. They would be very happy to see it stomped out completely. If you haven't notice the uproar about the abortion issue and then right you get down to the gospel it would be even more so mm -hmm. but we are to to guard the gospel and the really the truth of the word of god or not to just be loose with them if you will we shouldn't throw them around as not a big deal but we should be very Protective of hey, man. the truth. No oh, man, the average Christian today would say, "Oh, that's no big deal about most things in the Bible." But yet, every truth of the Word of God is a big deal to Him. Hey, Amen. Well, Jude exhorts us in verse three of his epistle to earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. I'm just going back a couple verses in verse 12 here in our text, Paul says to fight the good fight. Mm -hmm. well, it's going to be a fight, if you will. It's going to be a struggle with those who oppose us. Amen. Nowhere in the scriptures does it ever say well, that living for God and serving Him is ever going to be an easy thing to do. And certainly not when you stand for the truth. Well, they opposed Christ himself and everything he did and said, and yet we act as if we're just going to be able to skate on by in this life with no problem. Right. No. <coughs> it's called a fight for a reason, because it <laughs> will sometimes be a fight. It's called a spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. Amen. We must do as Ephesians 6 tells us and put on the whole armor of God. Amen. Well, to contend for the faith means we must fight for it. We must <coughs> defend it. We must profess it. We must stand for it. That's what this keeping that Paul is exhorting Timothy to do here. It's not just keep it to yourself and never share with anyone. No, it's, it's really to be a guard to it. Amen. But he says, keep that which is committed to thy trust. And he says, avoid vain and vain babblings. Mm -hmm. Avoid profane and vain babblings, which are 
which are really just empty and useless discussions and arguments. You'll hear people say things such as, uh, did Adam have a belly button? <laughs> Does it really matter if he did or not? Right. But you, you don't have to scroll the internet very long and see a supposed picture of Adam and Eve, and people start arguing why they have belly buttons. <laughs> Well, a good rule of thumb is, it, is there any profit or any theological implications in right. that discussion? If not, then it probably falls under profane and vain babblings. Amen. We can really get hung up in stuff that doesn't matter at all. That's right. That's exactly what Satan and the world would like for us to do. Mm. These things that really don't make a difference, they would want us to get hung up on those so we can forget about the things that are important or even cause those maybe to doubt. You know, we, I've often wondered how uh, the serpent was able to speak to Eve and how she didn't seem surprised that it was talking to her. I don't know all the details of that, but whether animals could talk before or not isn't going to make much of a difference, is it? Right. But we need to be careful about the discussions we engage in. Amen. If it's not edifying to the saints and glorifying to God, then it's probably something we should avoid. Paul, even in his second epistle to Timothy, in verse 16 of chapter 2, he says that <clears throat> Chapter 2, verse 16 of 2 Timothy says, But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Right. Well, it must be that they're already ungodly to begin with, and he says they're just going to add more ungodliness. They're not of any profit to a child of God. And you're never going to convince someone who is trying to discredit the, discredit the word of God by such arguments anyway. Mm -hmm. Then he goes on to say, after avoiding profane and vain babblings, he says, and oppositions of science falsely so called. Amen. The oppositions of science, man uses, quote, science and his own knowledge to try to oppose God's word. That's it. That's a very common tactic today. Just listen to the science, they say. And yet they don't even follow science all the time themselves. Exactly. So creation versus evolution has been a, a big one in recent times. And I'm afraid if we don't stand for that truth, then one day Christians will say, well, it's really no big deal. Right. But there are lots of implications that creation isn't true. There had to be a historical Adam who sinned and really plunged all of humanity in the, Amen. the curse. If there was death and suffering before sin entered the world, then God's word is a lie. Mm -hmm. There's so many issues when you embrace, or when you embrace evolution. Right. They're just simply not compatible with the word of God. Amen. It's, it seems like currently one of the upcoming things is homosexuality and transgenderism. Oh, Lord. And abortion to go along with that, too. But people don't even embrace this, the basics of biology anymore, and yet they try exactly. to say, use science to say that, well, the Bible's way is old fashioned or outdated or not true. I had to share this with you because I'm still flabbergasted by it. The other day I was on, I think, Facebook. And if someone was arguing that women can have a prostate, <laughs> they clarified some women can have a prostate. And they, you know, I'm, engineering is my specialty, but I know that there's not a single woman exactly. on the face of the earth that has a prostate. Either a man that has a uterus and there you go. We don't have to go any more detail than that, but I think you'll get the picture. <laughs> there, no man's ever given birth that's given to women. Exactly. There's 
so much foolishness that goes on today, and yet they want to claim that science somehow backs their what they have to say. That those are the type of oppositions that are going to come up when you proclaim the truth of the Word of God. When it comes to abortion, they'll say, well, it's just a fetus or a clump of cells or something. <clears throat> well, in all technicality, we're all just a clump of cells, just a bigger clump than when we were first conceived. So don't let people use science to try to persuade you to just believe the Word of God. The scientists in past times, they always try to point we use science to point to what God said, not the other way around. Right. Now scientists use it to point to their own ideas. I do want to bring up one thing that's something we don't think about much, but in times past you had arguments about what was called geocentrism versus heliocentrism. Is the earth the center of the universe or is the sun? We all might think I'm crazy, but I think the Bible teaches that the earth is in the middle of it. Science will not tell you that. Right. Well, God's word says the sun stood still in the day of Joshua, not the earth. Mm -hmm. It says in Psalm 19 that the sun going out and coming in has a circuit that it continues on. But just those little things we say, well, there's a little big deal. And then we end up with, now we have such things as evolution, which is, is a big deal. Right. We're not we're not careful. Except future generations of Christians will say, "Well, that's no big deal." Mm -hmm. No, we we need to guard the truth of the Word of God. If not, men will creep in unawares and teach heresy. Mm -hmm. Peter warns us against that. Peter, but talked on this a little bit in Second Peter. 2 Peter in chapter number 3. Beginning in verse number 3. Second Peter. He says, knowing this, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For mm -hmm. since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they are willingly ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth staying out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. Mm -hmm. But the heavens and the earth, which are now kept by the same word, kept in the store, reserved in the fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Mm -hmm. And here, he says that scoffers are going to come and say, well, all things are continuing as they were. Well, in this they deny that there was a global flood, and that's yeah. by and large denied today. Exactly. And so, well, it's just not possible. It is quite possible, but... Mm -hmm. If God's word says it is, we ought to believe it whether science can prove it there or not. There you go. Amen. Well, they don't understand how the Red Sea could have parted and they walked across on dry land. I've heard all sorts of different arguments from science of how it could have happened, but no one can follow what the scriptures say. Right. The scriptures say that God sent a strong east wind and it parted. Mm hmm. And they didn't walk in the muck and the mire and the mud, and they walked across on dry ground. Amen. It came back over top of Pharaoh and his army. And it was from the blood of that army that it got the name Red Sea. <laughs> but yet, man has all his own ideas of how things happen. They deny those such things and the flood, and they doubt that Christ will ever come again or that there's a coming wrath upon this world. And they say, well, all things are just continuing as they are. If you listen to scientists now, well, global warming is going to kill us all. <laughs> Always joke that it's going to get warm one day, but not the way they mean it. Right. <laughs> so warm that the 
element shall melt with the fervent heat, and the earth also shall be burned up in the works therein. There you go. Peter says that just a few verses later on, in just the same place. Let's go back to our, our text here in 1 Timothy, and we'll finish up. But after he gives these exhortations to avoid, or really to guard the truth, and to avoid these vain, profane battles and oppositions of science, he says, verse 21, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Mm -hmm. He says, some that profess to believe that have erred because of these things. And if you're not careful, you could very easily fall into these as well. It's not above the child of God to embrace false teachings. Now, God will chastise us for sure, if we're one of His. But you can be sure those who will only have a profession and not a true experience, they will oftentimes go towards these heresies and falsehoods or these man's reasonings. And mm -hmm. We see a few examples in Scripture. Hymenaeus is the one that Paul specifically mentions. Let's go back to chapter 1 again of, here in 1 Timothy. Here he says in verse 19, it says, Holding faith and a good conscience, which some have put in away concerning faith, have made it shipwreck. Mm -hmm. Of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Amen. Paul describes as Hymenaeus and Alexander, they've made shipwreck of their faith, he says. It's not that they were saved and then lost. But of faith itself, it says they had really made a mess of it, if you will, and come to the point where they blasphemed. If you go on over to 2 Timothy, he speaks on this Hymenaeus again, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Back to we'll verse 16 again, when we read earlier, through verse 18, he says, But shun profane they will increase unto more ungodliness, mm -hmm. and their words will eat as doth canker of whom is Hymenaeus and Philistus, who concern the truth of error, saying that the resurrection is past already and have overthrew the faith of some. Mm -hmm. As Hymenaeus had given in to these profane and vain babblings, and right to the point where he was saying the resurrection was already past. I don't know if he was a saved man or not, but if he was, he was sure messed up in some stuff. But that's exactly where these type of teachings will lead to heresies and eventually to just outright denying the faith altogether. Right. You see, we see this very clearly in our own time, with, such as that quote church in Madisonville that. First, they began to doubt what day of the week we should worship on. Actually, really, at first, they began to doubt the sufficiency of God's word and went after their own right. interpretation. Then they went to worship on Saturdays. And then now they're all the way down and they denied Jesus altogether in the whole New Testament. That's it. So that's exactly where these type of teachings and Arguments will lead to. Amen. You're right. Man's teachings were never designed to lead us closer to God. Satan is not stupid. He's very cunning, isn't he? Mm -hmm. He knows if he gets us just to doubt a little bit here and a little bit there, he gets us a little inch here and a little bit there. Before, no, before long, he'll have us doubt everything. There you go. Faith. Why we need to earnestly contend for the faith once delivered on the saints. We need to keep that which has been committed to our trust. Mm -hmm. Because these are the exact type of things that we really we face already in this society. And it's only going to increase more and more. Right. I'm sure Noah faced the same type of things. And he said, well, it's going to rain for 40 days and 40 nights. Well, there's no such thing as rain. 
All right, you can never do that. <laughs> Science says that can't happen. <laughs> but yet, no one just simply believed God. He was called a preacher of righteousness. And we just need to simply believe God when His Word says so. Said man comes with all these reasons to doubt the Word of God, all these reasons why his thinking is better than God's Word. But for the child of God, we really are, should never question the Word of God. Amen. We should question our understanding sometimes. Mm -hmm. But when his Word plainly says something black and white, we shouldn't say, well, maybe it really meant this. Right. Isn't that the tactic Satan has used from the beginning? You're right. Amen. But if you God not say, it's always been to question the Word of God. That's it. And that, I'm sure, will be his tried and true tactic all the way to the end. You bet. Sure. Well, it's just simply leave God in His Word and earnestly contend for whatever His Word has said. Whether it's popular or not, whether it's man's reasoning to understand it or not. We must simply take it by faith. We'll close with that thought. Amen.